Hey everyone, how's it going? A uh, little video on some things I picked up today. Uh, this arrived in the mail the other day. It's a rear view camera to attach my stereo in the F-150. Uh, lots of videos out there on these, so I won't bother showing you the install or anything. But it's just a little camera, mounts to license plate. Connects to a, a big long cable that I checked is plenty long enough. It'll run from the bumper of my 8-foot box all the way underneath along the frame into the engine compartment through a grommet in the firewall and back in behind the dash and connect to the stereo. Lots of wire there, lots of room. Really easy to hook up, but if you, you want to know, there's just, just check on YouTube here, there's plenty of them. These boxes up here, there we go. There are a couple of headlamps for a 2007 Toyota Yaris. I'm always working on Yaris's, and it's not like the bad cars, just minor shit. A uh, guy that I work on his cars all the time, he uh, was driving down the freeway and truck in front of him kicked up a rock and shot it right through his one of his headlights and the other one was all pitted and scratched so he said just get two of them they were about 150 bucks a piece and i'm charging him two hours labor to put them in uh he's a really good guy i've known him for a while i do a lot of work for him so i charge him 50 bucks an hour labor uh, another thing i picked up was up for myself again for the f-150 it's a mount a hitch receiver because the F-150 only has a bumper pull hitch, bumper mounted ball. And this goes, mounts underneath that to the bumper and has a two inch hitch receiver. So I can use different accessories. It has a place to hook up safety chains. It's rated at 5,000 pounds, which is all the truck can really tow anyway. So I want it more for accessories I can put in there. Also for putting a hook on, for pulling things, pulling people out, that type of stuff. Um, the other thing I got was... Uh, Oxygen sensor socket set. Five-piece oxygen sensor set. You see the brand there? Uncle Wiener. It's not really brand. They're just the sellers. I'm sure if you googled this part number, WT04A2099, it'll come up with whatever, whoever makes them or whatever. Probably multiple people sell them. And it's just a, I had this exact set. Same, same store I bought it from. I used it for about a year. Worked flawlessly and then I lost it. I lost the whole thing. I don't know if I left it sitting on someone's car or what I did with it. But yeah, it comes with an oxygen sensor socket. Uh, what are the other ones? Vacuum switch socket, two vacuum switch sockets, and a couple thread chasers. It's 25 bucks. Um, it's a decent set. So, uh, But the main thing I bought, it was really cool. Ordered this a little while ago, a couple days actually. That Princess Auto was the uh, jack. It's a pneumatic hydraulic jack. Replaced 12 tons. There was just a regular 12 ton bottle jack here. This one is air. See, if you look around the back, you can see the air cylinder there. Now, another modification I did, let's see if you guys can see that is instead of taking constantly taking the handle that came with it you know putting it on there and putting it over to to loosen it i pulled off the old it has the pin that goes through it punched the pin out i took this is a finial off a lamp you'll see there it says right there finial i think i got this from walmart or home depot and what they are is so you can see they just go on the top of a lamp to hold your lampshade on there. The nut that goes on top, they're threaded on top there. What I did was I took one of these. It fits almost perfectly over the, the nub that comes out there, but the threads are in the way. So I drilled out the threads, drilled a hole where the pin would, pin would go through, and it fits on perfect. Now I don't need a tool to, to loosen or tighten this up. Um, if it's really tight, I can just stick, you know, pocket screwdriver through there and crank on it. My favorite pocket screwdriver, by the way, SKUSA, awesome screwdriver. It's one of those ones with the flippable bits. This thing has come in handy a lot. But anyway, enough about that. So this jack, I mean, you can use it like any ordinary bottle jack with the handle if you don't have access to air. But I do have access to air. And so it just hooks up to this, this valve here, this lever. And let's see, let's back you up a bit here so you can see what's going on maybe. There we go. See, no, 
know, when I first got it, I was a bit worried. This jack is a little heavier than the, the standard one with it. I was worried these springs wouldn't have enough strength to pull it back up. Um, but the jack itself has springs attached to it, so it's not a big deal at all, you can see. Pulls it right back into the open position. Uh, works really good. I'll take a piece of angle iron here, you see. This is tough old bed frame angle iron. Horrible stuff. But... Let's see. Okay, let's give that a go and see what that does. Let's see if I can focus you down in there. Nope, I can't. Okay, anyway, you'll have to trust me. Alrighty, let's go. Oh, no problem whatsoever. Squish that down like nothing. There you go. Imagine, you can see it's starting to split right there. Bed frame, angle iron in general doesn't bend very well. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a beast. And I believe the jack was 129 on sale. I think they're regular 159. Uh, even at 159, I would have bought it. It just makes using the press so much just easier. You want to use it more than if you have to jack it up. And this little handle, I mean, anything that makes the press easier to use is, is a win in my books. Um, and if you watch previous video, you see the, the casters I put on it for swivel locking casters. Just makes it so you can wheel the press out of the way. I know if you got a press, like if you have a smaller garage like me, this is 24 by 26. It's uh, you're always in a fight for space. I mean, my garage is pretty full here. I'll just pivot around a bit and give you guys a bit of a look. There's not a lot of room left in here. Another thing I should mention when I was using the press, it's hooked up to the uh, air that I normally use for painting. It's got a desiccant dryer, and I think that is set around 70 PSI right now. Maybe, no, maybe 90. I use it for filling tires a lot. But, so if I needed more pressure, like if this wasn't going to flatten that, I could have just cranked up the pressure more. But wasn't wasn't needed. It's pretty heavy-duty little, little thing. So yeah, so I paid 50 bucks for the press used. Um, 130 for this. So it's 180. Uh, the swivel casters were 10 bucks each. So 220. 220 bucks, it's, uh, I don't know, well worth it to me. Um, it's just, I know it here in Canada, at where I happen to live. Who lives there? This guy. Uh, the Princess Auto 12-ton shop press is 300 bucks regular. Goes on sale for 199 now and then. But I'm still at, you know, just a little over 200 And I've got a little thingy here that came with it. Uh... And now it's got this, makes a big difference, the swivels. It just makes it all around better. The only thing I need to do is to flatten this a little bit. It's got a little bit more play than I'd like, so I've got to squish that in. It'd be nice if I had another press I could use to press that in. But I'll figure something out. I'll beat it with a sledgehammer if I have to. But that's it. Yeah, everything works great. It's awesome. I highly recommend everyone get this. And like I say, if you don't happen to have air where you're using it or your air compressor shits the bed, there you go. And this little mod is, is worth it alone. Again, just a little finial. You don't have to get brass. You can get them whatever color you want. This is just what I got. I actually bought these for a lamp for my mother a long time ago, but they didn't fit. They were the wrong thread, so I had to get another one. I didn't bother taking them back because they were like $5 or something. And I just figured they'd be come in handy someday. And lo and behold, I do that with a lot of stuff. A little hardware I buy that's wrong. I always keep it around because... In this case, it's really easy. All I had to do was take a hammer, pound this little pin out here, pulls it out. Like I said, I drilled out the threads on this, drilled a hole going through both ends, put it over, put the pin back on, and now I can open it and close it by hand without having to use the, the bar that it normally would require. So yeah, that's it. I've still got a few more mods I want to do to this thing. Uh, perhaps a pressure gauge added to it. Not really needed, but might be something I do. Probably somewhere on the, the press to mount this handle, maybe on top. 
was thinking of getting a couple of those uh, broom clips that you can buy at Home Depot that kind of clamp around the shaft and just hold it in place. Either put it there or on the side somewhere here, inside the, the C-channel, so it's out of the way. Somewhere, just so this is always with it. Um, that's it, and I gotta get a few press accessories. But for the most part, that's all I gotta do, straighten this out, and that's it. You know, it's, it's a decent press. Best, best 50 bucks I ever spent. And it just has a handy dandy little valve, see? And you can really control the valve, like slowly, so if you want to go slow, or wide open. And that's that. A lot quicker than... There you go, you like the sound effects? Pretty good, eh? Anyway, that's it. So, thanks for watching. Hope you guys are having a great week, and what's... Tomorrow's Friday. I hear fireworks outside. Okay, gotta end this video and go check what's going on outside. Take it easy. Thanks for watching.